I began exercising when I was 15 years old and just fell in love with the way that exercise and movement made my body feel. From there, after high school, I actually went on to college for business and real estate, and I was very, very certain that I was destined to be a realtor. Hello, and welcome to The Core Podcast. We're your hosts, Sandini Keller and Shannon Polson. I'm a Precision Nutrition Certified Coach. And I'm a NASM Certified Personal Trainer for over 13 years. We support women 30 years old and over to pursue health through realistic nutrition and fitness strategies. Our passion is to help you find that smile when you look in the mirror, find freedom when you eat, and joy in moving your body. Make sure to subscribe for your bi-weekly dose of doable health tips, practical advice, and so much more. It's the health education you wish you'd have. So today we have a bit of a different format for you guys. We are going to be interviewing each other. So today I am interviewing Shannon and in the next episode, Shannon will be interviewing me. We decided to do this because we realized that my clients know me very well and know where I come from and what I do and the same for Shannon's clients. However, all of you listeners are not all our clients. So we decided that it was a great time to let you get to know us a little better, understand what we do, where we come from, what our experience is, so that when you listen to the podcast, you know who's talking to you and what we're all about. So that's what we're doing today. So this should be a fun conversation and lots of new information for both of us because we know each other well, but there's still some secrets. (laughs) There are. There's so many secrets because we (laughs) met on Instagram and we connected in a way through just our passion and we clicked, but that was kind of it you know we haven't sat down Aileen and I have never met each other in person yes so we've never had that's the plan but we haven't done it yet we've never had a cup of coffee together we've never had a lunch date together to just catch up on life and everything outside of our businesses so this is this is good for us yes not only our audience but for us so we can just pretend now that we're on our lunch date yes it'll be good (laughs) well to kick it off I would like to know what led you to where you are today? What led you to this personal training and now virtual business because you used to be in person? So what path led you to this? Yes, that is a very good and a loaded question. So fill up your coffee cup. What path led me to where I am today? Well, I began exercising when I was 15 years old and just fell in love with the way that exercise and movement made my body feel. From there, after high school, I actually went on to college for business and real estate, and I was very, very certain that I was destined to be a realtor. And I worked in a office, a realty office, as a office coordinator for about a year and I hated it. <laughs> and I believe yeah, I can't that... picture you as a realtor. <laughs> no. And I just, I loved architecture and I loved, you know, houses and everything about it. But I just, this, I honestly I didn't have the skills to be a realtor. It just, I wasn't a part of me. Um, and the funny part about that is the broker who owned this office could tell that my heart was not in it. He could tell that this was not my passion. And one day he walked by my desk and he said, Shannon, there is a opening at the hospital here in town at the fitness center for a fitness instructor. I think that you should apply and just see where that takes you. And I thought that was great of him being honest. And that's exactly what I did. So I applied, um, as this fitness instructor position. And I fell in love with everything. I fell in love with the environment of the fitness center, all of the dynamics that came with instructing a fitness class and the energy and the people and the way that it made me feel. So soon after that, I went back to college for health and wellness. I soon ended my position at the realty office and moved my way up into more of a um, full-time 
fitness instructor into like an evening desk position. And it wasn't ideal because you're I'm waking up early and I was instructing boot camp classes. I'd go to school all day and then I'd go and man the desk at night. And I mean, it was anywhere from 5.30 a.m. to 9.30 at night I was working or I was instructing. But it was fun and I knew it's it's exactly what I wanted to do and it's what I had to do. So a couple years later, I was promoted to the fitness center coordinator. Um, soon after that, we kind of changed directions of the fitness center and moved it into more of a wellness center environment. So we were just focusing in on the holistic part of wellness. So not just the fitness aspect of it. So I did a lot of programs um, with like the nutritionist at the hospital and a lot of employee wellness programs and other businesses within the community. So it was a lot of fun, um, was soon promoted to wellness center manager. And when I was a manager, I had such a great team because I was able to, at one point in time, I think I had 18 personal training clients. I instructed anywhere from like six to 10 classes a week, plus just had this wonderful team around me, both in the wellness center and within the hospital that just made this wellness center thrive. And it was wonderful. Um, about, I don't know, eight to 10 years later, I decided I'm going to sell my house and I'm going to sell everything that I have. And I'm going to move to Colorado. So that's exactly what I did. I sold literally everything that I had, except for my two dogs and whatever I could fit into my Chevy Cruze and my two girls. And I made the 15 hour drive to Colorado and just kind of started a new chapter in my life. And I was a personal trainer in Colorado and it was okay. Um, I worked for a gym that had 4,000 members. Oh, wow. And the, the wellness center that I managed had about 350 members. So it was a huge culture shock. And I honestly didn't really, and this sounds bad, but I didn't really understand why people were working out in the gym so much when you had the Rocky mountains right outside your door. <laughs> I was like, why don't you go outside? Like, go for a hike, do some step ups on the bench and find a rock and do some push ups, you know? Like, but, anyways, so that was good and it was fun. And I eventually missed Minnesota because, if any of you that are familiar with Minnesota, we have a lot of water, we have a lot of lakes. So, growing up um, on the Mississippi River and then bopping around Minnesota, living in different areas, I've always lived on or very, very near a lake. So the mountains were wonderful. Um, a great, great thing to have in your backyard, but I missed water. So I moved back to Minnesota and I now reside in Duluth, Minnesota. And when I moved here, I immediately got a position at the local hospital as a personal trainer and fitness instructor. And it was full time and it was great. Um, parts of me were, I don't know, parts of me were wondering what else could I do with my life? Because I've been doing the same, just personal training, fitness instructing for so many years that I I loved it. Mind you, I really, really loved it, but I just feel like there is something else. I could have been doing more with my life. So then the pandemic hit hmm. and I got laid off. And the March 17th, I remember it, I closed down the fitness center doors at 5 p.m. And that was it. No one knew what was going to happen, regardless of what profession you were in, especially fitness centers. Um, you know, we were one of the last businesses to open back up. But March 17th, I locked up the doors at 5 p.m. And then I immediately went out and bought myself my first laptop. And from there, I was like, I am going to start a business. I don't know how I'm going to do it couldn't tell you, but that's how I started just plugging away on it. And I plugged away on it all freaking day from my website to just learning because working in a hospital setting, I mean, we had the CEO, we had the CFO, we had um, accounting, we had marketing. I had all of the dynamics that create a business basically done for me. Yeah. It was just my job to manage the internal part of the wellness center or the fitness center, and then my team. 
So I was learning all of these different aspects of a business and I still am learning and I still have good days and bad days. Like, okay, I learned something new and I can really, really establish this into my business. Whereas other days I'm just like, I have no freaking idea where I'm going right now. Yeah. Welcome but to entrepreneurship. <laughs> holy smokes. For those of you that are starting a new business, just keep going. Embrace the process because it's not easy, but it is fun. Yes. Hands down the funnest thing. And okay. So back to the pandemic, hands down blessing in disguise. I was called back to, to work here and there more of just like a, a warm body behind the desk because there really wasn't one-on-one -on -one clients that we had anymore. We didn't have any classes going on. So it's boring work, sitting behind the desk, checking people in. And we could only have four people in at the gym at a time. And that was, that was hard too, because you weren't seeing people as much. And yeah, starting my own business, I guess my, my vision behind it was, okay, so gyms are closing pretty much everywhere is closing. If you trust me and trust that I can um, either start you on a routine or continue to pro progress your current exercise routine, I will come to you. So my business was I went into people's homes or their businesses and I personal trained them. So I traveled around the community, around Duluth, Superior, Proctor, surrounding area. I also did a lot of virtual stuff as well because I grabbed a few of my clients from the hospital and actually retained them so that thank you ladies for sticking with me. But now I am slowly moving on to just more online personal training. And then I, I am still going around to um, people's homes and businesses as well, but not as many classes. Yeah. I think as you probably know, as an entrepreneur, your business is always kind of evolving, Yes, especially in the beginning stages. Like I'm in my my second year. And it's, I'm still, when I go to bed at night, I'm not like, yep, I'm there. I'm exactly where I want to be with my business right now. Like we're, we're always evolving, which yeah. is great. That's what we want to be doing. So that's where everything led me to where I am today. <laughs> yeah. You kind of already answered my next question because, you know, these, these things show up as, as we talk, right. But it was not a smooth path. As you talk about this, there were there were bumps, there were bruises, there were detours and coming back and circling. What would you say was maybe one or two of your biggest struggles in this? And I'm going to shift the question a little bit, not so much your struggle as a business, but as a personal trainer, you know, hey, you're at the gym all the time, or you know what you're doing. What was in in being a trainer and in supporting other people, what is the biggest struggle for you to maintain your fitness, for you to maintain your routine? Is that super easy for you? Or is that something that you've had to learn to carve into your work? It is very easy for me to stay on my own routine, my own exercise routine. I have my days 100%. So yeah, don't think, you know, all of these fitness gurus out there, all of these nutritionists that we are robots and all we do is eat, breathe and drink exercise and healthy foods because we definitely have our days that we'll talk about in one of my podcasts or one of our podcasts, the one more day theory with fitness is just treating your workouts like a business meeting. In the morning, I say, all right, normally I have been working out for most of my life at about 3.30 p.m. And that's my business meeting with myself. That's that's it. And I can't really rule around it like, oh, maybe at five I'll work out. It's like I'll give myself maybe most 30 minutes leeway. Like I'm really in a project. I just want to finish it. Now I'm maybe working out at 3.30, 4 p.m. But no, I have found that throughout all of this, I have maintained a exercise routine. And that comes mostly through just the personal commitment. This is important to you, so you're going to do it. Yeah, it makes me feel so good. Exercise for me is, yeah, I mean, it helps my jeans fit better for sure, <laughs> you know, but I don't have a six pack ab. I don't wear um, a two piece swimsuit when I go to the beach. I don't, I don't know. 
I like my quads probably because I'm a runner. But um, other than that, it, I do it because it makes me feel good. Mm-hmm. And I think that's kind of the bottom line of fitness in general is, yeah, I mean, you can do a lot of things with fitness to create the body that you want um, composition wise. But for me personally, it's about feeling good. That's when I feel the most sexy is when I'm working out or when I'm on a run. It definitely decreases my stress and it just makes me an overall very happy person. And again, it reminds me of one of my favorite quotes, uh, legally blonde Mm. exercise gives you endorphins. Endorphins make you happy. Happy people don't shoot their husbands. They just don't. No, 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 they don't. (laughs) Exercise makes us better people. (laughs) Well, exercise is medicine. Yeah. I mean, it just, it kills me sometimes when I work with some of these I don't know, even 40, 50 year olds that are on all these medications for blood pressure. And granted, our genetics have a lot to do with some of this stuff, but a lot of it doesn't either. It's Mm -hmm. just the lack of movement and the lack of healthy eating decisions that are, you know, leaning these people towards that kind of lifestyle. It's like, we just over time, right? Today, Mm -hmm. I was even reading this, this article and, and he was talking exactly about that. He's like, you know what? don't brag to me about how well you're doing in your older age and saying that you overcame a lot. If you started when you were 40 and you know, you look really healthy and you, and you are really healthy in your fifties. Okay. That's amazing. If you started when you were 15, you had time on your side. This is something that you have accumulated over time. And the the opposite is true as well, right? You, we, we, and this is leaning into the next question, but you know, you work with people in their 40s, 50s, 60s, that is a result of 40, 50, 60 years of habit. And Mm -hmm. it's never too late. But the fact is that that is the result of all those years of all that time. Yes, exactly. Which leads me nicely to who do you work with the most? Um, when I worked at the wellness center mainly, and even the fitness center, when I lo- moved to Duluth, I worked with anybody from uh, middle school. I think the oldest person I ever worked with was 101 years old. So I was super jazzed about all my experience that I worked with all of these different ages and physical activity levels and, um, it was just great. But now that I have my own business, business, I knew that I really needed to niche down. And so now I work with females that are normally 40 to 65 years old. And I have a few older clients and those older clients are usually in my group fitness classes. But um, I work with 40 to 65 year old females that experience pain Um, whether it's from their work environment, whether it's from their home environment, a past injury, um, or just lack of movement in general. And I work with these females to create and establish a routine that fits with their schedule. Um, So I'll work with traveling nurses um, that have a very inconsistent work schedule all the way to um, you know, stay at home moms that have the the schooling and then the after school activities. So yeah, we're just trying to create and establish um, both a fitness and then a nutrition lifestyle that fits them, that um, gives them education and knowledge as to why we're do- doing specific um, dynamics. And then just to feel less pain, people don't need to feel pain. We shouldn't be feeling pain. No. You know, what we kind of dig into right away why you're feeling pain and then we kind of build that foundation and then progress up. So. And what is it that as a coach, what services do you offer to people? What is it that you do? And you guys, I know the answer to this one. Okay. I just, I'm having Shannon tell you because Mm -hmm. you know, this is the part that we do know about each other because we work together. (laughs) Yeah. Yes. So tell, tell our people, what is it that you do? Yes. So I, my main focus is personal training, one-on-one personal training, and that can be either virtual or in person. 
I do offer nutrition coaching, and that has a lot to do with um, exercise nutrition, so pre and post nutrition, as well as what to eat when you're off the field. You know, how, how do you give yourself more energy? How do you decrease inflammation? How do you stay fuller longer? Just working on kind of the basic nutrition um, to help, again, establish that healthy lifestyle. Final question. See. What advice would you give to people who are saying, I know I should work out. I know I should do something. I know this is important. I just don't like to, or I don't know where to start. Like, I don't know what to do. What do you say? What do you say to the person that has the, I mean, I don't think anybody needs to be told that working out is important. You know this, but mm -hmm. you just can't make yourself take that step. What do you say? Yeah, that's, that's a good point because everyone knows that they need to work <laughs> out or move more they know that you need to eat better not smoke you know get more rest all of the things but I think you just need to start somewhere and it goes back to I think it's episode number nine which is the the 10 minute rule give yourself that that business meeting and start out with one day so let's say all right for the next two to four weeks every day on Wednesday after lunch I'm going to give myself 10 minutes to just move or add more movement in that than what you typically would. So whether if you don't already go for a walk, then go for a walk. Or let's say that you have a good baseline of walking. Now get down on your yoga mat or on a towel and start stretching. Just do something different that you wouldn't normally do for 10 minutes, one day a week. Once you're feeling pretty good about that, you've kind of established that habit. Now add that second day. So maybe now Monday and Wednesdays for the next two to four weeks, you're giving yourself that 10 minutes. Now you're adding a third, a fourth, a fifth. And, and soon with those five days, let's say Monday through Friday, you've got that 10 minutes in. That's 50 minutes of, of activity that you wouldn't normally be doing over, let's say, a couple of month period time. And then you start growing that duration. So now your 10 minutes has moved into 15, 15, up to 30, so on and so forth. And just go one day at a time. So that Wednesday, that first Wednesday, just say, I just need to do, I just need to do today. I just need to do Wednesday at 1 PM. I need to give myself 10 minutes. And then I'm not going to think about this until next week, next Wednesday, when I have that next 10 minute business meeting. So just go slow one step at a time and know that what worked for Karen down the road or for Mary, your coworker might not work for you, her diet, her exercise routine, where she's at in her journey is so different from where you are at. Don't compare, don't judge. Just think of your own journey. Where can you start? Where do you want to see yourself? But don't be so blinded by that long-term goal. You know, I want to lose 50 pounds in one year. Like, Great. Well, you just need to start somewhere and then slowly, I cannot say that enough, just slowly progress. <laughs> slowly. Yourself. Build that foundation, a strong, firm foundation, that habit, and then progress yourself up because you want to create habits that you're going to, that are going to last for a lifetime. Don't make unreasonable habits that it's like New Year's resolutions. People are, I'm going to eat salads for the rest of my life. And I'm going to go for a nine hour run every day. Like it's just, yeah, you, you gotta, don't have to start by going to the yeah. gym two hours, seven days a week. Oh my gosh. I've seen so many of that in my day. If you could see me right now, my hand is over my face because <laughs> it like, that's one reason why I now do what I do target the people that I now target is because I, I want to educate women with all of my heart to just start slow, build that foundation. Where are you feeling the pain? Let's build up from there. I want them to be su successful forever. I mean, maybe you need me for five years, but maybe you need me for only six months to a year just to build that foundation and those habits. And then you're good. You're, you're moving on. You've got this. Just start slow. Give yourself grace. Give yourself permission. Um, say kind things to yourself. You know, if you're unable to do a plank for 30 seconds, but you can do it for 15, good for you. Perfect. Build off of that. 
um, just be kind to yourself. You're, you're human too. And you got to start somewhere. That's awesome. All right. So that was my interview with Shannon. I hope you learned a little bit that you didn't know yet. And tune in next time because this is going to happen the other way around. Woohoo! So, yeah. Here we go. All right, That's All right everyone. <laughs> Thanks for listening and we'll see you soon.